What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today I got another Naraka video for you guys. Now, some of you OGs and some people that might have just come across it recently might remember the video where I did the how to pick your main or how to choose your main. I don't remember exactly how I worded it, but I, I know it was about that. Now that video is a little bit older now and I made that about probably 10 months ago by the time I get done with this video. So it's, it's about 10 months old and we've gotten four new heroes and counting so there's another one that they're getting ready to drop probably next season or somewhere around there so i figured it's best if we go ahead and go over the characters again talk about the new characters a little bit and also mention the different roles like we did before but this time it's gonna be a little bit different and basically what i mean by that is we're gonna break them up into groups and the categories are gonna be we're gonna have our hybrids supports and DPS. And that's the three categories we're gonna put everybody in. We're gonna talk about their strengths and weaknesses, how you should be playing them, how you could be playing them, all those things. And just to help you guys have a better understanding of every hero and who you should be playing and trying to main. Without wasting any more time, man, let's go ahead and get into it, breaking down every character. Okay, starting us off on the list again, you guys already know we're gonna go in order, top to bottom and maybe one day we'll go bottom to top, but it don't make sense, okay? Okay, let's get into it. Starting us off, we got Viper. Now, like I said last time, Viper is still the same, right? But now this time I'm gonna put her in the new category, Hybrid. I'm putting her in that category because as you guys can see down here in the bottom right corner, she is categorized as a support slash control character. So because she is so far in the support section, I'm gonna go ahead and say that Viper is a hybrid. If you're playing Viper, and if you're somebody that likes to kind of have more of a troll sense of the, the battlefield, Viper is definitely gonna be the hero that you wanna use. Like I said in the last video, man, her ultimate allows her to stun enemies and, and have them dazed for a short period of time. Her tactical abilities or her skills in this game as they call it, she has abilities where she can prevent people from using their grappling hooks for a short period of time or she can get rid of their abilities for a short period like viper is just an all-around good character uh we every character even though she doesn't have mobility that's just because of her abilities every character can be mobile if you yourself are good at movement so we're not gonna say that's like a category but it's a bonus i guess for certain characters next on the list we got Tomoch. same thing as viper he's a support slash control so you guys already know he's in that hybrid category now Tomoch, like i think after playing him for a certain period of time i've started to appreciate and respect how you're supposed to play him and the things that he actually does in my opinion where viper has a good amount of control of the battlefield i think he has a very strong control especially if you can wait until his ultimate is charged up and people walk in and out of there depending on which one you use you can really control the outcome of a fight and he's really good in team play which is why he's the support and also viper these two characters are really good at helping the team he's pretty easy to understand and learn viper is also pretty easy to learn and understand and both of those two characters weaknesses are going to be more so just that their abilities do not help them escape you're kind of just there so if you're if you're gonna engage in some shit, you got to be ready to fully go in and, and fight but like i said two easy characters to understand super beginner friendly and and good for team play and controlling the outcome of a battlefield if used properly next on the list we got matari now she's more in the support category not like i said we not gonna make mobility its own category y'all that's not what we gonna do now before i would have said matari was more of a dps character and i still think that she really can be used like a dps character if you really learn to master her and she's not all that hard because once you understand how the invisibility works and her teleporting, you solid, bro. I'm telling y'all, those are the main things that you're gonna remember. Matari's skills allow her to teleport and then her invisibility, it's super busted if used properly and you can make it to where you turn invisible and your team turns invisible. And not only that, you guys will get healed off of it. That's why she's in that support category. But make no mistake, if you want to, you can play Matari very aggressive. Cause like I said, the fact that you go invisible and if you're moving fast paced, people are gonna have a hard time tracking you and staying on top of, of exactly where you are if you play her the right way super good character not crazy hard for beginners to learn and one of the more fun characters in the game in my opinion moving on we got tarka now i'm gonna be real y'all i love tarka y'all see down here 
This man is a five-star difficulty. I didn't understand it at first, but now I do. He's in the DPS category, by the way, right? And you see his mobility is up there because of his abilities. Let me tell y'all something. Tarka can be very beginner friendly. He can be. His weakness, as you guys can see, he doesn't really have anything for survivability. Survivability? Survive. You know the damn word that I'm looking for. He doesn't have anything that allows him to be super tanky, right? But if you use his abilities correctly and you utilize the hell out of that mobility in them, you gonna be untouchable. I mean, I had a spectating video where I seen this dude and, and he ran through the whole lobby in ways that I've never seen Tarka be used before. Tarka is one of the best DPS characters in this game and his mobility is crazy when you use his ultimate. The, the frenzy, fire literally then you got his his it, it just all around tarka is really good like i said his weakness though is he's not a tanky character he doesn't have anything to to get him out of being stun locked and stuff like that so once you get caught up in somebody's combo for infinity then you're stuck okay keep that in mind moving on we got kurumi or kurami kurumi i think it's kurumi so she's gonna be in the hybrid category because she's not just your healer even though that's her main purpose in the game she is the one of the sole healers of the game she has a lot of survivability and can be very tanky if you use your healing abilities correctly like i said i'm not gonna break down the entire you know list of everything every single character can do just know she's a healer in the game she can be tanky if you use all of her abilities the right way with her ultimate which can give you shield or health or both or you use her skill which gives you health as long as you like it's it, the ways you can play with her are crazy and she's a really good character man once you learn how to master all of her abilities um she doesn't have any type of actually one of her abilities give her mobility which is why you guys can see down in the bottom right it is a little higher than most but yeah she she's a pretty good character downside obviously none of her abilities or anything like that help her dish out damage so you are going to have to solely rely on your skill play with swords the spears all that all the weapons you're gonna have to rely heavily on that moving on we got one of my favorite characters tian high the monk is so crazy now tian high is somebody that i also put into the controller category at first i thought he was really just a tanky character because he is he can take a lot of damage he has his bell which can either reflect people and knock out their weapons or just push people off of him altogether. and then he has his giant titan form which allows him to really supply himself with health if you use the right one but he's just super tanky and i guess they said he's more of a controller because now that what you really think about it is when he activates that that giant form the the like asherah's wrath form is what i like to call it when he activates that he does control the battlefield he makes people run away disengage from a fight all types of things and it's a little harder to kill him if you're not confident in your your ability to fight you know what i mean but downside none of his abilities give him mobility you know what i mean so once you're caught up in something you might as well go ahead and fight it out because like i said you're tanky now let me say this real quick as a disclaimer just because i'm saying tanky does not mean that they get more health than other characters it's just their abilities allow them to take more damage than other characters so keep that in mind next up yorohime let me just go ahead and say this y'all i know it says survival up there but i'm gonna be honest with y'all i'm putting her more in the dps category i think yorohime is super focused on just how crazy strong she is and how much dps damage that she can actually put out now she does have an ability that allows her to gain some health so i guess you can put that in the the survival category but it's not really much so i would say if you're using her don't look for her to to you know what i'm saying supply her Herself with all the heals she's a dps in my opinion bro used correctly you get out there with them damn demon wind scar blades that she got you gonna destroy everybody i like to use her in solos and everything she's pretty fun very beginner friendly very beginner friendly if you guys are wanting to get in there with her and just dish out crazy damage use yodo hime moving on we got valda now valda is going to be also in that hybrid category i don't think she's beginner friendly i'm gonna be honest with you guys i know it only says three stars right there but valda is a little bit more of a complex character than what the game is leading on now she's a controller slash dps because of these things controller because her ultimate if if it hits enough people you're gonna capture four people i think is the max is what it can catch 
but I don't know. I've never seen her catch more people than that, but it's caught at least four people. You can keep them suspended in the air for a while so you or your teammates can get free shots with a, a ranged weapon. Uh, then she has her skill abilities, which freezes people in her bubble. Not really freeze, but keeps them held inside the bubble, almost like Zabuza off of Naruto, if you guys are familiar with that. But yeah, she, anything controller-based, like stunning people, keeping them, you know, locked down in a certain spot, that's what she's gonna do. But she also has abilities that hit like a tank, like her ultimate, if you use the right one, it will smack people for a lot of damage. So she's really good. Downside, obviously, none of her abilities are mobility, so you know what I mean, like, there's that. I don't think her abilities are really survival based either where it's gonna, you know, give her health. So that's also a downside, but that just depends. If that's not your play style, then I wouldn't worry about it like that. But she is a little more difficult than three stars, trust me. Moving on, we got Yushin, Yushan. I, I've always struggled with pronouncing his name. In my opinion, you guys see it down there. Survival, damage, and mobility. I'm gonna go ahead and say he's more on that DPS area. Cause I don't know. I think his one of his ultimates does give him health, but it again, y'all, it's not much. And when you see people running around with him, they looking to really fuck your day up. You know what I mean? Like they are really looking to cause some serious damage. Now his abilities do give him mobility, and he again, like I said, he just dishes a lot of damage. Now he doesn't control the battlefield as good as Tian Hai does when he turns into his giant form but he's faster and hits a little harder in my opinion with his abilities and it's a continuous attack unlike Tian Hai, who has to grab you and then hit you you know what i'm saying he doesn't have to do that uh another downside like i said if it's not your play style don't worry about it but he does not heal himself really well so that you know what i mean and he's not a support character he's in my opinion solely used to dish out some damage so there you go with him in my opinion is he is he beginner friendly yes i think he's pretty beginner friendly because it's not like his moves are crazy complex now they can be every character in my opinion can be complex if you're really good at the game you can really combo those off and use them at the right time everything like that but if we're just talking like somebody new to the game doesn't know what they're doing he's pretty beginner friendly Next up, we got Wu Chen. I put Wu Chen in the support category because of his support slash survivability. Now, it's going to say support because he has an ultimate, well, almost all of them, where he can teleport his teammates out of danger or teleport his team into a, a very good third party situation for his team. He doesn't give anybody health or anything like that. So I know it's like, but why would you put him in support? I got you it's because he can get you out of danger it's because he can he can switch an enemy off of you that might have you in a combo stun lock and then he also has a skill where he throws down his knives and they provide like this shield wall that keep you safe from ranged attacks and everything like that and you can loot and on top of that y'all when he does that he gives himself and maybe even his allies i haven't used him with a team in a while but he for sure gives himself more shield so you get three of them, you throw them down, and bam, now you can have full shield depending on how low you are. You know what I mean? So he's a really good character. Obviously, he's going to have high mobility because he has teleportation. That's mobility. So beginner friendly, not really, because you can really mess him up and, and not put your team in the right situation. You could also not put yourself in the right situation if you don't know what you're doing, because it's not just like a, I tap the button, I teleport out of dangerous, place a teleport get into some action i gotta know if i'm placing the teleport in the right spot and it kind of goes on and on good character though really good character but not very beginner friendly moving on to justina now justina is also a hybrid because as y'all can see she's a survival and control and then mobility now let's go over the mobility real quick mobility because if you activate her ultimate she's zipping across the damn map not really but She's zipping, right? Like flying through some shit if she really wants to. She is a little bit of a harder character to use, so I wouldn't say she's beginner friendly either. Uh, her skills allow her to regain health and shield. So she's really good in that category. And it also protects her from damage for a short period of time. So she's a really good character in that area, which is why she's in that survival. You know what I mean? Like she has stuff like that. And her ultimate, if you zip past somebody, you freeze them, which puts her in that controller category because she kind of controls the outcome of a battle some, to some extent. Now, the downside to her, 
her abilities don't hit hard. They don't do any real damage. You know what I mean? You're going to have to be good at combos and with your weapons and stuff like that. So she's not a character that has abilities that's going to get out there and dish out damage. If that's what you're looking for, she's not for you. And like I said, she's not really beginner friendly. Moving on to Takeda. Takeda? Takeda? However you want to pronounce it. I think it's Takeda, but okay anyways super beginner friendly as you guys can see only a two star difficulty and he's going to be in my opinion more of that dps because he doesn't crazy heal himself but he can he can with the right abilities equipped he can heal himself and he has somewhat of a control of the outcome of the battle if you use him correctly none of his abilities have mobility so that's the downside but his abilities can hit hard he has disarm abilities he has abilities where he prevents people from using a blue focus strike on you that doesn't mean they won't combo stun lock you but they won't blue focus strike you as long as you're glowing purple really good character really fun character and like i said super beginner friendly one of my favorite characters in the game to use moving on to our next healer we got zipping in now zipping in is a little different from karumi when it comes to healers you guys can see look at how crazy her support slash survival is i do believe she's beginner friendly as long as you read as long as you get in there and you read what her abilities do you'll understand her wholeheartedly and and just get a good grasp on her now the downside no mobility with hers her abilities obviously don't do any type of damage because she's just a healer in the game but if used right, yo, you can be crazy tanky. Her ultimate kind of prevents you from dying. If you use the right skill, you can keep healing yourself. If you put the right the the right talents on, you can keep getting your skill and your ultimate back pretty fat. Like she's she's busted in in survivability. You know, pretty damn tanky. You just gotta really be good with your sword play type thing. So she's she's a really good character for a lot of beginners. But the one one of the downsides, in my opinion, is a lot of people don't like to play support slash healer roles. So you you know if you're a beginner, you're probably not gonna go with her. But she's really easy to use. Moving on to another one of our newer characters, Farishin. She's in the DPS category. I know she has survival up there, and that's because if you use the right ultimate, you can keep healing yourself, and it actually heals really fast on your shield and stuff like that. So she does give herself good health. She has really good mobility, and honestly she's probably one of one of the more well-rounded characters i don't think she has a huge downside in my opinion she might be one of the only characters like that now i know you guys are looking at her little scale i guess and seeing like oh it's not super far off on any category though but trust me she has very good control if you use her ultimate good mobility if you use that same thing the ultimate also gives you survivability and damage and that's all just from her ultimate. And then if you use her skills the correct way, she has ones that get you out of being combo stun locked. She has another one that dishes out high damage where it kind of leaps you backwards and then she pulls her gun out and then takes a shot and takes a good chunk. She's all around, she's a very good character. I'm telling y'all not too many downsides and not very hard to master. I wouldn't say crazy beginner friendly, but it, if you play the game just a little bit, you'll have a good grasp of how to use her. She's a very well-rounded character. Then moving on to the newest character, Akosu, I think, Akos, Akos. He is a little more difficult. I wouldn't say crazy beginner friendly, so I wouldn't go straight to him if it's your first time playing the game, but he is a really fun character to use and really good to use. He's also in the DPS category. He can dish out high damage with all of his abilities. His ultimate is made to do high damage. His tactical ability, or skill ability is really used as a way to kind of knock people back or to to knock them into the air so that you can continue your own combo set like really good he has great mobility downside to him he does not have crazy survivability and stuff like that he's not really used for support and i wouldn't say he's fully in control of the outcome of a fight he's really good in a one-on-one -on -one. i don't know about group battles like how yodohime yodohime is great group fights and stuff like that so yeah keep that in mind you guys see he's a four star difficulty which is why i say he's not super beginner friendly and on top of that just clicking and using his abilities you're not going to get the full effect and usage out of them just by clicking them and using them all the time you know what i mean but very good character to use in the game if you start to understand how to actually play naraka so there you have it guys 
that's the end of the character list so far as you guys can see we have a grayed out area down here and i believe i know who the character is it's, a, it's another female character and i've been super excited waiting on her if it's her but we'll talk about her in an individual video but yeah that's it man that's that's breaking down all the characters and categories and stuff like that some of their strengths some of their weaknesses who's beginner friendly who's not and stuff like that and honestly if I was just going to go ahead and tell you who you should play mainly, I'm going to go ahead and say Viper, Tomoch, Yorohime, Takeda, or Farah, or Faria, however you pronounce her name. Those characters are going to be pretty easy, and, and it's going to keep a lot of people interested because most of them can kind of get out there and dish out good damage, which is a lot of people's first instincts when they get onto a new game. Anyways, they're not really out there looking to control the battlefield support and do all those things even though i did say viper and, and tumult those characters in my opinion are going to be your best bet to go with to just like play the game right off the bat and and have a good experience so hopefully that was helpful man like i said this was the updated video well overdue and yeah with that man i will catch you guys in the next one love you guys stay safe I look forward to seeing y'all next time